So if you've seen my Instagram posts by now, then you probably know that I cut my hair quite a bit shorter. I've had my hair pretty medium to long in length for quite a while, and for vintage hairstyles, it's actually not my preference. I think it's really pretty and fun to style, but the time and hair care is just a lot more than what I feel like dealing with right now. In an attempt to create more authentic 1950s hairstyles, I've gone with a more collarbone length haircut. Today's video is more of a brief introduction to my new hair length, just so you can get a better idea of what kind of styles this hair length is great for. So I'm out on the patio just to show you for reference what my hair looks like when it's straight and unstyled. Uh, the shortest section is the bang and it's about to the chin and then the hair kind of tapers a little longer from there with the longest point being the back. And I asked for a collarbone length hairstyle using the same horseshoe styling that we normally would go for. Here is the collarbone. The hair is kind of resting just past that point, but it is a little shorter in the front and a little longer in the back, as you will see. I think we cut off about four inches from the length. So if there's one piece of advice that I can give you when it comes to vintage hairstyling is you probably want to cut your hair. So as you can see, my hair is pin curled all over my head. I have three standing pin curls in my, the bang section. The rest of the hair is curled in a, a few rows of medium sized pin curls all rolling under basically to create that kind of page boy effect. I didn't film my pin curl set because this was a practice for me, so I'm going to kind of take a look at what I did and the method and see if I want to use that for a video in the future. I did follow a 1950s setting pattern and I will link that below. So other than the haircut, the only other change that I made is instead of getting a partial highlight, I got a full highlight. I asked for um, a cooler, more platinum blonde highlight. Normally I go for a more golden, natural look, but heading into summer I just wanted something brighter and it's nothing I haven't done before, but just to switch it up a little bit. So all of the bobby pins are out except for the bangs, which I think I'll save for last. And I'm just finger combing through the curls. The hair is super soft because, you know, when you get a fresh haircut, I feel like when you take off a significant amount of length, you, you get rid of a lot of dead, sad hair. <laughs> Smoothing brush. And once you take off a significant amount of length, you're gonna just reduce effort and labor for all of your hairstyles. Like that took me five seconds and it already looks almost perfect. <laughs> so your rolling time will be significantly reduced. You can put more hair in each curl because there's less length going around your pin curl or your curler. So there's a lot of benefits to having a short, to medium length haircut. I think to today's standards, this is almost a short haircut, but I've had a pixie cut before, so I would call that a short haircut. So essentially, this is the same method I would have used in the past to create my page boy hairstyle um, for my other videos where I use the roll and go hair tool and create pin curls that are all going under. The only difference is the hair is shorter. So there's just a little bit less weight on the style. And the setting pattern that I used for reference, um, the actress, I forget her name, but her hair was 
even shorter than this and the results were pretty similar. So if your hair is like chin length, you can still do this setting pattern. Uh, it'll just be a shorter variation. And I forgot to use some pomade, so I went and, and grabbed that. I'm not gonna use very much just cause my hair is super clean and I don't wanna weigh it down too much, but just like a tiny bit. Usually for standing pin curls, I would use my pin curl sculpture tool to get like a tighter curl, but I think for 50 styles, that might just be too small. The shorter your bang is, the more height and volume you will get. My bang, I did not really trim at all. I I kind of just kept it at the same length and it's just tapering with the rest of the hair. So it is the shortest section and then it just kind of goes longer in the back. And I do have a very subtle, <laughs> I have a very subtle horseshoe right now because it's shorter, I didn't want it to be super severe. I think when your hair is longer, um, it can be more helpful. So at this point, I could decide whether I want to brush it out and brush it smooth, or if I wanted to create like a little faux bang, I could, and that would be kind of cute, but I don't think I feel like doing that today. But when your bang is kind of at this like mid length, you can really do a lot with it. There's a little bit of a swoop there. And if you don't like having a, a severe S shape like swoop like this, instead of doing the standing pin curls, you would just do lie flat pin curls and that would give you a bit more of a pushed back look. So if you want to emphasize the S shape, you want to pull this little section here and form it that way. If you want to smooth it down, you would just kind of brush it and you can add it in to this section here. So that concludes my introduction to my new haircut and one of my first times styling it. I'm looking forward to trying out some other pen curl setting patterns. And if you have any suggestions for shorter hairstyles that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this little update and that you'll come back for my next video.